Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Chris. Welcome to Linux Tech Geek. So in today's video, I want to show you guys NeoVad. NeoVad is a graphical user interface for NeoVim. Now, despite what you may think that I only use Emacs, it's not true. I use NeoVim and I use NeoVim a lot. What I primarily use Emacs 4 is my bigger configuration, so you can think about my Qtile config, my Xmonad config, stuff that's I, I rewritten in .org. That's what I use Emacs for. All of my other configurations, like my Bash RC, my ZSHRC, my Fish config, all of that stuff, I really use NeoVim. So. That's what we're going to do today. I'm going to flip over to the desktop. I'll show you guys NeoVide. I'll show you some really cool stuff that NeoVide can do. And then I'll show you a little bit of my NeoVim configuration. So that way, hopefully, uh, you get kind of an understanding. All right. So if we go over to the desktop here. Now, I was working on some stuff. Let me close that one out. NeoVide. Now, NeoVide does have a... They have two websites. Well, they have a GitHub website, and then they have their official website. Okay, their official website is neovide.dev, and this will give you um, all of the uh, configuration stuff and how you can get started. Now, I will show you how I installed this on Gen 2. Is I did this right here. Um, I did the cargo install git. Um, and then I uh, just got it from the GitHub pretty much. Now, I, I'm pretty sure some Linux repositories has NeoVide in their repos. Like uh, it says right here that Nix has uh, NeoVide in it. And then, of course, Arch always has what seems like every application. So that's how you can do it. And if you're running on Mac and Windows, uh, you can use this as well so neobad is written in rust which um, i like rust applications they tend to run super smooth and they're relatively fast so let's go ahead and show you guys um neobad and i'll launch it here this is neobad and you may be saying well this is the same thing <laughs> as NeoVim, and you would be correct. Uh, <laughs> that's because NeoVad uses the NeoVim's configuration, right? It's just a graphical front end. That's all it is. All right. So everything, everything that you can do in NeoVim, you can do in NeoVad. But everything that you can do in NeoVad, you can't do in NeoVim. So let me go ahead and explain that, okay? So let's uh, let me open up the Bash RC here, okay? And then on this one, let's open up uh, my ZSH RC. All right, for instance, you can see the font difference. Hopefully, you can see that, right? So on the left hand side, this is NeoVim, and and you, you can see, you can see the, the font difference. The fonts the fonts look good. Okay, I'm not saying that, but there there's a difference, right? And that is because with NeoVim, the fonts are predicated upon which how big the fonts are set in your terminal, right? Because NeoVim is a uh, it's a console based application, right? So. It, you can't set, you know, you can't set uh, different fonts or different font sizes rather for NeoVim, you know, for that specific application, because every application that you open up in uh, a terminal will have the same the, the same font size. However, <laughs> if you use a GUI front end such as NeoVim you can see that we have different font sizes, all right? And the cool thing about using NeoVide over NeoVim is that, A, you can do this. Another cool thing is you might see this 
you know, this mouse stuff right here. What is this? You know, this is super cool, right? Like, you can see all these animations and stuff like that. You're not going to get animations in a console application. You're not. Okay? Also, smooth scrolling. This thing is... It's buttery smooth. It's really, really good. Now, if you see a little screen tearing or whatever, that's not because of that application. That might be because of PyCom. I don't have PyCom set um, the bet, uh, two to my uh, um, my driver or whatever. Okay, so but it's super smooth, and that's really really cool. Now, I really. Really like that. So let's go ahead and close out of NeoVim. We ain't going to need NeoVim. Now, what would I use NeoVad for? Well, pretty much I'm going to use NeoVad for my CSHRC, BashRC, stuff like that. I'm not going to use it for everything, but I am going to use it. And I'm going to keep it here on the system because I do think it's a cool project. And, you know, it, it runs super smooth. Um, but I'm also still going to use vim or neo vim okay when i have to do those small teeny tiny edits and stuff and then of course i always use emacs for you know the bigger stuff but let's go ahead and open up my uh neo vim configuration so we can do config and vim and then init that lua and right here you can see this is where I set the font, right? So I set the font right here to JetBrains Mono, and then I have medium set. But if I wanted to set the font size, well, check this out. <laughs> we're going to do 40. This is going to be ridiculous, but we're going to do it. Let me write it. Boom. <laughs> That's a little ridiculous. I would never use this like this, but you can do that, right? It's a GUI application. So let's set it to something more practical here. Ah, uh, yeah, 14. I think 14 is pretty good. Actually, we'll do. Uh, I'll do 18 for you guys, just so you guys can see a little bit better. All right, but that's pretty cool, right? Another cool thing about using Neovad is that um, I think you can do you can do a bunch of other stuff like color schemes. I can write a color scheme file and. Neovad will adhere to that color scheme, but NeoVim won't, and that's because you can set some some GUI type of stuff. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to do it yet, um, but I know you can do that. And you can see right here because we have this variable right here, this GUI font variable, uh, and that's giving NeoVad the font, but NeoVim doesn't. You know, it, it doesn't get all of that information. All right. So let me go ahead and show you guys some of the, the, the cool animations. Let's get back on the uh, website here. All right. And let's look at the features. This website's being a little slow. So go ahead and zoom in for you guys. Okay. So here are some of the features that Neovad has, right? It supports the ligatures and all of that stuff. And then you already seen that animated cursor uh, thing. So, and then we've seen some smooth scrolling. We already seen smooth scrolling. And it that smooth scrolling is, mm, is so good. I mean, it is butter, butter smooth. There's also some animated window stuff that you can do, which is, you know, that's pretty cool too. Um, we can get blurred floating windows. All right. Uh, emoji support. Uh, WSL and then... Cool, you can actually connect to an existing NeoVim instance, which means that you could have NeoVim, I guess, running as a server. And then you could use Neovad as a client. So that would be really cool um, if you had like two computers and stuff like that. Um, okay.
So this is... I'm checking out some of these animations. <laughs> and they're really cool. They're really cool. I want to learn how to do some of these animations. So I can, I can show you guys. Alright, to learn how to do the configuration, head on to the compu- I mean, okay. Okay, here we go. Alright, here. I figured out how to set these animations and everything. Um, <clears throat> but, we set it to this railgun animation. And you can kind of see these, like, splotches, I guess, on the, uh, you know, these little bubbles. And, and I think that's kind of what it's supposed to do. Well, let's check out some more because these these things are really, really cool. Um, apparently, you can also tweak the settings on some of these too. So let's look at Torpedo here. What's Torpedo? So Torpedo is just a faster one of that. Let's find one that's actually cool. Uh, pixel Dust. Okay. So let me go ahead and fix down here. Let's get up visual mode and then we'll uh change word and then pixie pixie dust not pixel dust pixie dust let's write it yeah yeah i, I kind of like that it kind of looks the same as like rail guns so it's not it's not really that noticeable but you can you can notice some of the uh, the little bubbles and everything um what else is there there's sonic boom okay that's that looks cool it might be a little annoying though but we'll we'll, we'll do it so it's sonic Sonic Boom. It's not actually, it's not actually doing it. I don't. I spelled Sonic Boom right. I don't understand how come it's not... It's not really doing it. Huh. Yeah, it's supposed to do that, but it's, it's not... It's not doing it. It's alright, what's the, uh... There's Ripple. Let's see if Ripple works. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's cool. That is cool. So watch. Watch what happens when I start typing. Uh, see? You said the little, the little ripple? Yeah, I, I... You know, I mean... I know it's not... It doesn't do anything, you know? But it's still cool, right? Like, it's cool to have a little animations and some just some stuff especially when you're doing a lot of configuration stuff i find that you know if you have a little fun in whatever that you're doing you're more likely to keep doing it because it's it's cool right um if everything is just bland and it's just oh let's get these texts on the screen well it's not always fun um and then there's wireframe. We're not gonna check out all, all of these, but uh, you can the particle generation and behavior. Hmm. You know what? Let's uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Neo Vide uh, cursor VFX. Opacity. Uh, what do you do? Two hundred. Yeah, I don't see a. I don't see a big difference, but I'm sure. I'm sure there is. Um, then you got particle density, lifetime, 
just all of it the speed so you can do you can really do a lot with these uh you know all of this like animation uh type of stuff uh let's see what else we can actually do here because there's some more stuff that you can do with um I don't want to go right there. Let's go all the way up. Let's see if there's something else we can do. <clears throat> so right here it says, hey, this is how we set the font. Okay. I've already showed you how to set the font. So we have our font stuff right here. Okay, and it's pretty much showing you right here how to do that. And there's some bunch of other stuff right there. Uh, line spacing, scale. You know what the nice thing about this website too? Honestly, they show you how to do it in BIM, BIM script, but they also show you how to do it in Lua. Like, that's super cool because my new configuration, well... The configuration I've been using for a while now is actually written in Lua. Um, it, before it was written in the uh, the Vim script, but uh, I don't use Vim script anymore. So that's that's super cool. And one of these days, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to actually make my own configuration of uh, you know Neo Vim. Um, I I think this is Matt's configuration that I'm using now, which. Again, nothing wrong with it. It works, and it works pretty good. Um, but I do need to kind of write my own. We can also do, uh, okay, like floating blur and stuff like that. That's kind of cool. A little transparency if we wanted some transparency. You know what? Let's do a little transparency here. So we'll do Vim minus G or dot g dot neovide underscore transparent transparency and then 0 0.8 does sound good well something did happen but okay okay uh 0 0.1 <laughs> let's see how bad this is So 0 0.1 is no transparency. See 1.0. Huh. All right, let's do uh, 0 0.5. Yeah, still no transparency. Um or is there? 2.0 a.m. in a real thing? Because it should be showing my, my background right now, right? Uh, 0 0.3? Yeah, 0 0.1? Yeah, it's weird. It's really not showing... It's really not showing my background. Hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, I'll do 0 0.8. I'll, I'll, let's see a 0 0.8. Like, it does have transparency down here a little bit, right? But I would figure actual transparency would be showing my my desktop, my, my, my background on my desktop. And it's not. I don't know why. Let's quit. And then let's open it up again. Neil Bide. No, it's not. That is weird. I'll have to uh, tweak it and everything like that. But that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys. This is one of those videos that um, I'm just showing you an application. I know I didn't really configure it, go into, you know, all that stuff. But honestly, there's not, 
there's really not a lot to configure unless you're going to configure the uh, the animation type of stuff and the GUI fonts. Um, your main configuration, like I said, will be your NeoVim configuration. So that's kind of how it goes, right? Um, and there's really not a big reason other than those animations and all that to really use NeoVad over NeoVim. Okay, it's just another... You know, it's just another text editor, right? Um, there's a text editors here on Linux is a dime a dozen. So I do want to thank you guys for watching. And if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, feel free to leave them down below. I do get back to you guys. Give me a thumbs up on the video if um, this does help you or um, you like my content. It really does help out the channel. And until next time, I want you guys to take care, be safe, in peace.